Canada versus Australia, where should I go? In the most recent years, Canada and Australia have become two of the biggest destination hotspots for Irish and British people who wish to work and travel. So what's it going to be? Moose or kangaroos? Hockey or Aussie rules? This article will highlight the day-to-day -day living comparison between these two great countries. Canada and Australia are two of the largest countries in the world, so if I were doing a comparison between every city and town in both countries, you may finish reading this article sometime next year. Instead, I decided to pick the main two immigration travel destinations, Toronto and Sydney. So where should I go? Toronto or Sydney? Flights and travel. This one is a no-brainer, unless you love cramps and airline food. The average flight time from London to Australia is 24 hours plus stops, 17,000 kilometers, usually with one stop along the way. It will probably take a few days for the feeling in your ass to return, not to mention to get over the jet lag. This means you could watch an entire season of Game of Thrones and not even be halfway there. Whereas London to Toronto averages 7 hours, 5,720 kilometers, which is considerably less time in the sky. Now let's talk shop. The most frequently used airlines Sydney bound are Qantas and Emirates with Air Canada and Air Transat being the top two when traveling to Toronto. Here is the price of return flights taken from two separate calendar dates this year. Destination, Dublin to Sydney. Date, August the 1st, 2014. Source, Skyscanner. Flight operator, Emirates. Stops, 1. Price, 827 euros. Destination, Dublin to Toronto. Date, August the 1st, 2014. Source, Skyscanner. Flight operator, Aer Lingus. Direct, 430 euros. Destination, Dublin to Sydney. Date, December 1st, 2014. Source, Skyscanner. Flight operator, Etihad. Stops, 1. Price, 704 euros. Destination, Dublin to Toronto. Date, December 1st, 2014. Source, Skyscanner. Flight operator, Aer Lingus. Stops, Direct. Price, 336 euros. These prices were quoted on the 13th of May 2014 from skyscanners.ie. The flights and prices on this chart are for example only. Prices may vary and fluctuate. We're not responsible for flight or prices quoted from this chart. Please contact your travel agent or Qantas, Emirates, Air Transat or Air Canada. Rent. The first thing you'll need to do is find a place to stay. And unfortunately, whether it's Toronto or Sydney, you will probably find rent expensive. Many people choose to live in the city center, to be in the heart and close to everything. But this comes at a high price. Opting to live slightly outside the city center is the wiser and cheaper option. Also, it's smart to live with friends or roommates as this significantly lowers the price per person. Below is a table with the average rent for both cities. Apartment, one bedroom in city centre. Toronto, 1,464 Canadian dollars and 62 cents, or 976 euros and 77 cents. Sydney, 2,244 Australian dollars and two cents, or 1,526 euros and 10 cents. Apartment, one bedroom outside of centre. Toronto, 1,047 Canadian dollars and 21 cents, or 698 euros and 40 cents. Sydney, 1,652 Australian dollars and 59 cents, or 1,123 euros and 88 cents. Apartment, two bedroom in city centre. Toronto, 2,664 Canadian dollars and 63 cents, or 
1,777 euros and 7 cents. Sydney, 4,319 Australian dollars and 83 cents, or 2,937 euros and 81 cents. Apartment, two bedroom, outside of centre. Toronto, 1,903 Canadian dollars and 20 cents, or 1,269 euros and 26 cents. Sydney, 2,856 Australian dollars and 39 cents, or 1,942 Australian dollars and 56 cents. Jobs Employment Now that you have a place to stay, you will now need to start job searching, unless you have one waiting for you when you get there. Being an Irish or British newcomer, one of the best ways to start your job hunt is through the Irish or British community itself. As the old saying goes, it's not what you know, but who you know. Many people find jobs through word of mouth, friends and family. Apart from the obvious jobs and recruitment websites, sites such as Craigslist, Kiji, Facebook can be useful. The unemployment rate in Australia, 5.8%, and Canada 5.9% is relatively low in comparison to other countries and considerably lower than Ireland 11.7% but this is all relative because it all depends on your occupation your location these are big countries and whether your industry has a high demand one thing that is for certain is that both Australia and Canada have a high demand in the trade industry so if you're an electrician plumber carpenter or labourer, just to mention a few, you will probably not spend too long looking for work. Also the hospitality industry can be a good place to start job hunting. The table below shows the current minimum wage for each city as of June 2014. Toronto, general wage $11 per hour, bartender server $9.55 per hour. Sydney, 16 Australian dollars and 37 cents per hour, or 622 Australian dollars and 20 cents per week. Median hourly rate by job location, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Administrative assistant, 242, 16 Canadian dollars and 71 cents. Registered nurse, RN, 206, 30 Canadian dollars and 94 cents. Customer Service Representative, CSR, 175, 14 Canadian dollars and 3 cents. Personal Support Worker, PSW, 161, 14 Canadian dollars and 72 cents. Early Childhood Educator, ECE, 150, 15 Canadian dollars and 68 cents. Registered Practical Nurse, RPN, 140. 23 Canadian dollars and 49 cents. Bookkeeper, 127. 16 Canadian dollars and 51 cents. Median hourly rate by job location, Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. Retail sales assistant, 200. 18 Australian dollars and 59 cents. Waiter, waitress, 134. 15 Australian dollars and 24 cents. Carpenter, 126. 26 Australian dollars. Registered nurse, RN, 123. 29 Australian dollars and 46 cents. Receptionist, 110. 19 Australian dollars and 48 cents. Childcare worker, 97. 21 Australian dollars and 11 cents. Barista, 96, 17 Australian dollars and 92 cents. To find your wage for your occupation, please click on the city of your choice. Tax Canadian taxes. Unless you're Del Boy Trotter, there is no escaping the fact that you'll need to pay tax. The question is, how much will you pay? In Canada, there is a provincial VAT and there is federal VAT, which adds up to a total of 13% in Ontario, 
called HST locally. You must pay this tax on most purchases. The 13% VAT is not incorporated into the price tag most of the time. So if you buy an item, such as $10, you will pay $11.30 when you get to the cashier. When you arrive in Toronto, you must apply for a social insurance number, SIN, before you begin to work. The amount of income tax you pay in Toronto obviously depends on how much you make. There are two types of taxes you will pay, provincial and federal. Every province in Canada has a different tax percentage, depending on your salary, but everybody pays the same percentage of federal tax. However, both taxes are often taken off your salary at the same time. Federal Tax 2014 15% on the first $43,561 of taxable income. 22% on the next $43,562 of taxable income. On the portion of taxable income between $43,562 and $87,123. 26% on the next 87,124 of taxable income on the portion of taxable income between $87,124 and $135,054 29% of taxable income over $135,054 Provincial Tax Ontario Tax Brackets for Ontario 5.05% on the first $39,723 of taxable income, plus 9.15% on the next $39,725, plus 11.16% on the next $429,552, 13.16% on the amount over $509,000. So, to roughly calculate the amount of tax you pay, just add the two percentages together. The tax year in Canada runs from January the 1st to December the 31st. If you're on a working holiday, you'll be able to claim most of your taxes back. Australian taxes. In Australia, the VAT is a 10% flat rate on purchases and is incorporated into the sale price. Australians use a tax file number TFN, to identify themselves for tax purposes. Upon arrival in Australia, it's imperative to apply for one as soon as possible. The Australian tax year starts on July the 1st every year and ends June the 30th. Many Australians receive tax refunds every year and if you are working on a working holiday visa, you will usually get 100% of your tax returned. Australian Tax Bracket Taxable income, 0 to $18,200. Tax on this income, nil. Percentage, 0. Taxable income, $18,201 to $37,000. 19 cents for each dollar over $18,201. 0 to 9.7%. $37,001. To $80,000. Tax on this income is $3,572 plus 32.5 cents for each $1 over $37,001. Percentage 9.7 to 21.9%. Taxable income $80,001 to $180,000. Tax on this income is $17,547 plus 37 cents for each $1 over $80,000. Percentage 21.9% to 30.3%. Taxable income $180,001 and over. Tax on this income $54,547 plus 45 cents for each dollar over $180,000. Percentage, 30.3% to 44.9%. Transportation. Toronto Transit consists of subway, train,
buses and streetcars, trams. All three are connected, so it doesn't matter how far you're traveling or how many transfers you make. A one-way fare is $3. I recommend that you choose to live near the subway line as you don't want to be standing outside at 7.30 a.m. at minus 15 degrees waiting for a bus or a streetcar. Sydney doesn't actually have a subway system. It operates a train network and a bus route. The train fare depends on how many kilometers you travel, $8.60 max. And the bus routes are divided into six sections, so the fare depends on how many sections you're traveling through. The max you will pay one way is $4.70. Below is the breakdown of costs of transportation in both cities. Transportation, one-way city transit ticket, Toronto, three Canadian dollars, Sydney, bus, four Australian dollars and 70 cents. Transportation, monthly pass, city transit, Toronto, 128 Canadian dollars and 50 cents. Sydney, 120 Australian dollars. Transportation. Taxi fare begins at normal tariff. Toronto, four Canadian dollars and twenty-five cents. Sydney, three Australian dollars and fifty cents. Transportation. Taxi, one kilometer. Normal tariff. Toronto, one Canadian dollar and ninety-three cents. Sydney, three Australian dollars. Gasoline, one liter. Toronto. One dollar and thirty-one cents. Sydney, one Australian dollar and fifty cents. Volkswagen Golf 1.4, 90 kilowatt treadline or equivalent new car. Toronto, twenty-three thousand Canadian dollars. Sydney, twenty-six thousand Australian dollars. These prices were quoted on the thirteenth of May, two thousand and fourteen. Weather. If any category in this article is going to be the deal breaker, it's probably going to be this one. The options are sun, followed by sun, or sun, followed by snow. Canada and Australia have opposing seasons. Winter in Canada is summer in Australia. So on Christmas Day in Toronto, you'll be wearing long johns, and in Sydney, you'll be wearing your bathing suit, if anything at all. Toronto has four distinct seasons with warm, humid summers and cold winters. The weather in Toronto has considerable variance in day-to-day -day temperature, particularly during the colder weather season. The winters in Toronto are harsh, but mild in comparison to other places in Canada. Whereas Sydney has a temperature climate with warm summers and mild winters, with rainfall spread throughout the year. Also, Sydney is significantly less humid than a Toronto summer. Here is a breakdown of the annual temperatures in both cities. Toronto, average high, low. January, minus one to minus seven. February, zero to minus six. March, five to minus two. April, 12 to four. May, 18 to 10. June, 24 to 15. July 27 to 18, August 26 to 17, September 21 to 13, October 14 to 7, November 8 to 2, December 2 to minus 3. Sydney average high, low. January 26 to 18, February 26 to 18. March 24 to 17, April 23 to 14, May 19 to 11, June 17 to 9, July 16 to 8, August 17 to 9, September 20 to 11, October 22 to 13, November 23 to 15, December 22 to 14. Alcohol. Let's move on to a more important incentive that will determine your choice. Alcohol. Where do I get it and how much will it cost me? Sydney and Toronto have completely different laws governing alcohol. 
Ontario, the province in which Toronto is located, has very strict laws for consuming, purchasing and the distribution of alcohol. You can only purchase off-license alcohol in three places. The beer store, LCBO and the wine rack. All three are open for business from 11 a.m. till approximately 10 p.m. and are usually closed on public holidays. Most bars will serve alcohol from 11 a.m. till 2 a.m. The legal age for drinking in Ontario is 19 years old. The legal drinking age in Australia is 18, which has a very relaxed attitude to both off-license sales and also opening hours. Many bars in Sydney are open 24 hours a day, and most regular bars are still open till 3 or 4 a.m. daily. In Australia, alcohol is sold both off-license, called Bottle O's, and numerous stores where you can purchase alcohol, usually from 11 a.m. till 11 p.m. every day. Most bars will also sell you beers or spirits later than this, at rather inflated prices. Fortunately for the purpose of this article, there is a PJ O'Brien's pub in both Toronto and Sydney, so I have compared both prices in each bar to give you a rough idea of what you can expect to pay for a drink. Drink. All prices include tax. Guinness. PJ O'Brien's pub, Toronto. Eight Canadian dollars and fifty cents. PJ O'Brien's Pub, Sydney, eight Australian dollars and twenty cents. Bottle of Budweiser, Toronto, five Canadian dollars. Sydney, eight Australian dollars. Vodka Coke, Toronto, six Canadian dollars. Sydney, seven Australian dollars and fifty cents. Pint of Local Brew, Toronto, Steam Whistle, seven Canadian dollars and fifty cents. Sydney, Carlton Draft, seven Australian dollars and ninety cents. Glass of wine, Pinot Grigio, Toronto, nine Canadian dollars and seventy-five cents. Sydney, eight Australian dollars. These prices were quoted on the twenty-sixth of May two thousand and fourteen, with the international conversion rate of the same day. I would like to thank the P.J. O'Brien's management. Sierra Sydney and Shannon Toronto for their assistance in this article. If their kindness alone is anything to go by, you should definitely check out these two pubs. This authentic Irish pub has been celebrated year after year as the unmatched heart of hospitality in Toronto's downtown core. Be it an after-work bite and a beer, authentic live Irish music or a social or business party, our pub's three distinct venues provide the ideal setting for any gathering. Located within the Grace Hotel complex on the corner of King and York Street, P.J. O'Brien's, a taste of Ireland, in the heart of the central business district in Toronto, with a warm glow of the open fire and the Irish traditional music drowning out the hustle and bustle of city life. As daylight fades, the crake begins. Settle in with a creamy pint of Guinness or one of their many beers and wines or spirits. Groceries one thing Canada and Australia have in common is their chocolate is brutal. Obviously, there are a lot of products that we know and love that are not available in either city. Soon enough, you'll be asking your mum to send you a goodie bag from home. Here is a comparative list of all the essentials. Product, milk, one litre. Sydney, one Australian dollar and 44 cents. Toronto, two Canadian dollars and four cents. Loaf of fresh bread, 500 grams. Sydney, 3 Australian dollars and 36 cents. Toronto, 2 Canadian dollars and 82 cents. Local cheese, 1 kilogram. Sydney, 11 Australian dollars and 14 cents. Toronto, 11 Canadian dollars and 49 cents. Eggs, 12. Sydney, 4 Australian dollars and 14 cents. Toronto, three Canadian dollars and twenty-three cents. Chicken breasts, boneless. Sydney, ten Australian dollars and sixty-seven cents. Toronto, eleven Canadian dollars and forty-eight cents. Potatoes, one kilogram. Sydney, five Australian dollars and nine cents. Toronto, one Canadian dollar and eighty-one cents. 
Apple, one kilogram. Sydney, four Australian dollars and eight cents. Toronto, three Canadian dollars. Tomatoes, one kilogram. Sydney, five Australian dollars and nine cents. Toronto, three Canadian dollars and three cents. Pack of cigarettes, Marlborough. Sydney, eighteen Australian dollars and fifty cents. Toronto, ten Canadian dollars. Phones. In this day and age, we can't do without one. Australia and Canada each have multiple competing phone companies, eager to lock you in or on to two-year contracts. If you opt out for pay-as-you-go, this will cost you a lot more in the long run. You're probably better off finding a cheap plan. Also, to save money, you can bring your phone from home and get it unlocked. This way, you won't have to pay the crazy prices for a new phone. And whatever you do, do not call home without purchasing an international call card. For this comparison, I've picked two of the largest phone companies and two similar plans. City, Toronto. Company, Rogers. Model, Apple iPhone 5C, 16 gigabyte. Data, 500 millibytes. Monthly minutes, unlimited within Canada. SMS, unlimited. Contract length, 24 months. Monthly bill, 79 Canadian dollars or 53 euros. City, Sydney. Company, Telstra. Model, Apple iPhone 5C, 16 gigabytes. Data, 500 millibytes. Monthly minutes, approximately 475 local minutes. SMS, unlimited. Contract length, 24 months. Monthly bill, 69 Australian dollars or 47 euros. These prices were quoted on the 13th of May 2014. It's important to remember that there are competing phone companies in both Australia and Canada offering competitive prices. Time difference. What's it going to be, Marty? Into the past or back to the future? Toronto is usually five hours behind Britain and Ireland, whereas Sydney is usually nine hours ahead of Britain and Ireland. When I say usually, I mean that in spring and autumn, Australia, Canada, Britain and Ireland have different dates when they put their clocks forward or back for daylight savings. So for a couple of weeks in spring and autumn, you will find that the time difference from home varies by one to two hours. I'm not going to give you a headache trying to explain daylight savings between all three places. So I decided that the time would be better spent telling you when the footy is on in Toronto and Sydney. These times are based on Sydney plus 9 GMT and Toronto minus 5 GMT. Event. Premier League, 3 p.m. start. Toronto, 10 a.m. Sydney, 12 midnight. Premier League, early game. Toronto, 7 a.m. Sydney, 9 p.m. Champions League. Toronto, 2.45 p.m. Sydney, 4.45 a.m. GAA football game, 3 p.m. Toronto, 10 a.m. Sydney, 12 midnight. Six Nations, 2 p.m. game. Toronto, 9 a.m. Sydney, 11 p.m. Heineken Cup, 2 p.m. game. Toronto, 9 a.m. Sydney, 11 p.m. Coronation Street. Toronto. Curry is surprisingly popular in Canada. Sydney, get a life. Immigration. Australia and Canada both have programs that enable young Europeans, including Irish and British citizens, to go to either country to work and travel for one to two years. For Irish citizens, International Experience Canada has three separate programs that offers 18 to 35 year olds the opportunity to come to Canada to work and or travel. Working Holiday, Young Professionals, and the International Co-op Program. Each program has different criteria and conditions, but the Working Holiday Program is by far the most utilised by the Irish. Each year, roughly around January, Ireland receives a quota, which is usually snapped up within minutes. So if you're going to apply, keep an eye out for the opening date. 
Australia has a similar program which has no limit to the amount of visas it issues to Ireland, but the age requirement is restricted to 18 to 30. To obtain a second year visa, you have to work in regional Australia for at least three months of your initial year. Below is information on the Australian and Canadian working holiday programs. Country, Australia. Age requirement, 18 to 30. Period of stay, 12 months with the option of additional 12 months. Program, working holiday visa, subclass 417. Places allocated 2014. Unlimited. Status of program. Open. Government fee 420 Australian dollars. Additional requirements 5,000 Australian dollars in personal funds. Health insurance. Police check. Country Canada. Age requirement 18 to 35. Period of stay 24 months, one time. Program IEC Working Holiday Program Places allocated 2014 7,850 Status of Program Closed Waiting List Government Fee 150 Canadian Dollars Additional Requirements 2,500 Canadian Dollars in Personal Funds Health Insurance Police Check if you wish to remain in Canada after your working holiday is over, there are options to apply for a permanent residence depending on your occupation, education, family ties, time spent in country, work experience and many other factors. If you're not eligible for permanent residence, you'll have to find a job offer with a potential employer. The employer then has to apply for a Labour Market Opinion (LMO). Basically, they ask the government permission to hire a foreign worker. If the employer receives a positive LMO, you can then apply for a work permit, which can range anywhere from one to four years. The most common way to immigrate to Australia after the working holiday usually requires getting a visa via employer sponsorship or applying for skilled migration. Recent legislation means that for the majority of applicants, getting sponsored is the only viable option. Once you are on a sponsorship visa, 457, for two years or more, you can apply to be a permanent resident. In general, Canada has a less complicated and less strict immigration system and is considerably cheaper than the Australian government fees. For a complete rundown on options, categories and fees for immigration, you can find more information on the official government websites www.immi.gov.au www.cic.gc.ca I hope you found this article helpful in determining where you go next. In my personal opinion, you should try to visit both these fantastic countries as they have different cultures, histories and scenery for you to experience. For more written content like this, Check out immigroup.com forward slash news and check out our free tools. Find any embassy in Canada. Find legal support globally to get you to Canada. Pass your citizenship test. Canadian Immigration Self-Assessment.